From the previous video, I want the red triangle to render on top of the blue triangle, but I do not want to worry about the order that I render these triangles. In 3D scenes, we render thousands of triangles, and if we have to worry about what order we're rendering them in, it just won't work. So graphics hardware provides a way for us to give precedence from one triangle to another, and we do that by adding depth to our scene. Let me draw our coordinate system we've seen in previous videos. This is the y-axis. Positive 1 in the y. Negative 1 in the y. Here's the x-axis. Hopefully this is old hat. We've seen this before. Positive 1 in the x. Negative 1 in the x. Just like our algebra books. Now there's one more axis I haven't talked about, but that is the z-axis. And the z-axis is coming straight out of the screen and poking you in the nose. And to be more precise, the negative z-axis is coming out of the screen and poking you in the nose. And the positive z-axis is going into the screen. I have an image here that might help out with this analogy. These are my feet on the beach. This was a great vacation I took not too long ago. And let me draw our z-axis here. You can definitely see some depth to this scene. The water out here is much further away from the camera than the sand is, and the sand is further away from the camera than my feet are, but I'll just throw a z-axis onto the scene. And just guessing, I'll put the zero here for the z. That's z. And negative z is towards the camera. Right, negative z. And positive z is out here in the ocean. Not just like our coordinate system here, we go from negative 1 to 1 and negative 1 to 1. If I gave OpenGL a vertex position that was like 1.2 in the X and 1 on the Y, that would be roughly out here. And OpenGL would still render the triangle properly by connecting the vertices and filling in all the fragments. But all the fragments outside the window are clipped off. There's no point in OpenGL rendering or trying to render anything out here because it doesn't exist. Okay, but the rest of the triangle will be filled in. The same is true with Z. If there's a value that's greater than positive 1, then we're not worried about it. It's too far for us to see. And the same is true on this end. Negative 1 is too close. It's inside our head or it's behind the camera. So we've been ignoring this Z value. In fact, I haven't even told you about it. We've been using X and Ys. But the Z value is definitely there. Let's bring up the vertex shader code. And if you recall, when I wrote this pass-through shader, we sent the X and the Y position onto the screen. And then I set the Z value for every vertex to be the same value. All vertices sit at Z equals 0. Or to be more precise, that is the X y plane. Then this fourth coordinate, you can completely ignore it. Don't worry about it. We'll get to that in future videos for now. Totally irrelevant to what we're talking about. Okay, so on that note, vertices with a greater z value are quote-unquote further away from the camera. They have more depth. Same thing with my my feet example here. If, if you have negative z, then you're closer to the camera. If you are more positive, then you're way out here in the far distance. So we need to give some depth to the scene. Right, we have the red triangle, we have the blue triangle. If I move the red triangle closer to the camera, closer to the viewpoint, then it will always draw on top of the blue triangle. And that is our goal. But in order to explain how that works, I need to explain buffers. An image is simply a 2D array of pixels. If you can get that one concept in your head that no matter what image we're trying to draw, whether it's a 2D image or a 3D image, the end result is to make a two-dimensional array of pixels. And what is a pixel? It's an RGB value. Now, there's several pixels in this scene here. I don't even want to try to draw the size of that array. But if we focus in on the few pixels right here, three, four, five, however many pixels there are, pretend we're zooming in real close right there. Let me draw the two-dimensional array that would possibly exist there. Here, we'll split it up into threes. Thus, we're seeing nine pixels here. And every cell in our two-dimensional array, an image is just a two-dimensional array of pixels, every cell contains an R, 
a G and a B value, red, green, blue. For every pixel, how much red is showing, how much green is showing, how much blue is showing, and that essentially shades the color of the pixel, or, or colors the pixel. And all these pixels store red, green, blue. Don't blink. There you go. Each pixel stores a red, green, blue. There's also an alpha channel. I'm ignoring alpha. We'll get to alpha much later. For now, just think red, green, blue. And this is what makes the color buffer. Every time you send out an RGB value from your, your fragment shader, remember this diagram we made before, we send our attributes in, vertex shader does some work, sends some data to the fragment shader, and out pops a red, green, blue value. For every fragment in the scene, that red, green, blue value gets placed in this two-dimensional array. All we're trying to create is this two-dimensional array. Well, this is what's known as the color buffer, obviously. We're putting colors into this buffer, and it stores the color, and eventually we display those colors onto the screen. There's another buffer we need to learn about, and that is the depth buffer. It also is a two-dimensional array, but instead of storing three values, like the color buffer does, it stores one value, and that value is the depth of the fragment. For example, our two triangles here, we said they're both at zero. I hard-coded that Z value of zero in the vertex shader. Let me just show that to you again. Remember we said everything has a Z value of zero. And that essentially makes every fragment in this scene at Z depth of zero. Okay, that Z value, it has nothing to do with the position of where the vertices show up on the screen. The only thing OpenGL uses the Z value for is the depth. Okay, but the X and the Y simply determine where the vertex is on the screen. The Z value determines the depth. Now, by default, this depth buffer is not turned on. It has some runtime overhead to calculate depths, and so if we have a scene that doesn't need depth buffering, most scenes do, very rarely do we need to not have a depth buffer. We always need the depth buffer, and so we need to turn on the depth buffer explicitly. My default is turned off. I'll show you how to turn it on, but before I show you how to turn it on, let's, let's run through the algorithm here of how a depth buffer works. First of all, when we begin rendering the scene, we want to set our depth value to the furthest value away. If you remember, I drew the z-axis here, and positive 1 is the furthest out we can go before we're not really concerned with that particular fragment. And then negative 1 is the closest we can go with the z-value. Same is true with this depth buffer, we want to start out assuming that everything is far, far away. So we clear our depth buffer to the furthest value that we're concerned about, which is positive 1. So all these become a 1, 1, 1, don't blink. There we go. I cleared them all to a 1. And then let's pretend we're OpenGL and we're trying to render this scene here. And we first start out with a black scene. So all of our RGB colors, they go to zeros. We'll clear out this color buffer as well. Don't blink. There we go. I've cleared our color buffer so all the channels are zero, thus making a black scene. And then let's get these two triangles off of the same plane. So we shall say that the red triangle, its Z value, let's set it equal to negative 0.5. So it is pretty close to the camera, not all the way right in front of the camera, but it's pretty close to the camera. The blue triangle, let's set its Z value to 0.5. Right? It's further into the screen than the red triangle. The red triangle is closer to the camera than the blue triangle. And remember, we're trying to render these fragments right here for both triangles. The red triangle will render first. So all these fragments, one by one, they'll turn to red. But let's just do one at a time. Let's do the center one. Right now it's 0, 0, 0. Our fragment shader runs for the red triangle. It outputs completely red, no green, no blue. Right? This is a fragment. It is a potential pixel. Now what is the depth of this fragment. What OpenGL does is it looks at the three vertices that makes up the triangle and it interpolates the Z value or the Z depth 
for those three vertices. Well, all three vertices we said were going to be at negative 0.5. That means every single fragment inside of the red triangle is at negative 0.5z as well. So the hardware actually evaluates this. We don't need to do this in the shaders at all. But the z value for this potential fragment is negative 0.5. At that point, the hardware takes this negative 0.5 or this depth value and compares it to what's stored in the depth buffer. The depth buffer is at 1, meaning whatever is there, which is black, we started with black, it's way out there in the scene. Way out there in the scene. This is closer to the viewer than what's out there in the scene. So this fragment passes the depth test and becomes a pixel. All right, the, these color values are written to the actual color buffer. Let me erase this right here and replace it with a one meaning this fragment is turned to all red okay this fragment was stored into this pixel and then the depth value is stored as well so let's put negative 0.5 right here negative 0.5 pretty close to the camera not all the way in front of the camera but pretty close to the camera now we're done with this fragment and the c value let's get them off the screen and the hardware will do the same for all of these pixels in here. I'll, and the same is true for all of their depth values as well. Don't blink. I'm going to update all of the pixel information for the red triangle and all the depth information for the red triangle because that's what we're rendering right now is the red triangle. Don't blink. There we go. You can see I've filled in all of the pixels with red because their depth values were closer than the far out value of 1. But I also replaced all the depth values with the depths of these pixels. Okay, all the red pixels are at negative 0.5, negative 0.5, negative 0.5. All of them are at that same depth value. Well, eventually we turn around and say, let's render the blue triangle. Okay, we need to render the blue triangle. And the fragment shader runs for the blue triangle. And it outputs a color value of all blue. All right, zero red, zero green and all blue. All right, and the depth value for each of these fragments is 0.5. Okay, they're further into the scene because all the vertices for the blue triangle are at 0.5. Well, let's do the depth test here. We have this potential pixel, this fragment, and we need to write it to the color buffer, but we have a depth value. We need to test the depth value against the depth values in the depth buffer. All right, let's just focus on the center pixel for now. So 0.5. Is 0.5 less than negative 0.5? Well, no, it's not. So this fragment fails the depth test. Okay, does that make sense? We, we had this fragment. We wanted to write it to the color buffer here, but its depth value is further away than what's already there in the depth buffer. So this fragment fails the depth test. It is rejected. It does not become a pixel. All right, so that's the depth buffers and the color buffers. Now in the next video, I'm actually going to turn on the depth buffer, do some experiments with it, and show you how the depth buffer actually works. It's not turned on right now, so each triangle we render just stomps on whatever's there. But once we turn it on, you can see that we can start doing some things and, and add a little quote-unquote depth to our scene.